Around half a century ago, Queen Elizabeth II invested Charles as the Prince of Wales in a ceremony full of pomp at Carnarvon Castle, but not everybody was joyous about the occasion. Since that momentous day in northwest Wales, in July 1969, Charles has been moving on a trajectory to one day become king. But it was his memorable actions on the day which won the hearts of many, and helped extinguish some rising resentment against the monarchy brought about by a new nationalist movement in Wales. Live, what midnight outside palace after Queen's death looks like in front of 4,500 people, and on a stage occupied by the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, Charles took a knee before his mother. The Queen then invested Charles with a girdle, sword, coronet, ring, rod and kingly mantle. Prince Charles declared, I, Charles, Prince of Wales, do become your liege man of life and limb and of earthly worship and faith and truth I will bear unto thee to live and die against all manner of folks. In line with custom, he then kissed the Queen's cheek and the two embraced. Read more, the life and achievements of Queen Elizabeth took his place in a throne at his mother's right, before standing to give two speeches, one in Welsh the other English. His speeches were broadcast by the BBC in color in black and white to 19 million viewers in Britain, and 500 million around the world. While the elaborate ceremony was rich with pageantry, Prince Charles' role at the investiture was hugely important, and far more than simply symbolic. At the time, there was a growing movement of Welsh nationalism and displeasure towards the rule of the monarchy. To prepare himself for the investiture, Prince Charles spent a term studying at University College of Wales, dedicating himself to learning about Welsh history, culture and language. As a result, he was able to give his ceremonial address in Welsh, and his replies in both Welsh and English. According to the UK National Archives, in an interview after the investiture, Prince Charles said, For me, it's a way of officially dedicating one's life or part of one's life to Wales. Read more, Prince Harry too late to say final goodbye to Queen His time studying in Wales was challenging. Every day he was greeted by a group of protesters at the university, he told British broadsheet The Telegraph. I had to go down to the town where I went to these lectures, and most days there seemed to be a demonstration going on against me. But his persistence paid off and he won over the nation. Speaking for myself, as a result of my two-month stay in this country, I have come to see far more in the title I hold than hitherto," he said in part of his investiture speech. I am more than grateful to the people of this principality for making my brief stay so immensely worthwhile and for giving me such encouragement in the learning of the language. The investiture kick-started a four-day tour around Wales. A tour of press note held in the National Archives stated Prince Charles wishes to meet as many people as possible, that informality should be the keynote and formal occasions kept to a minimum. Read more. Operation Unicorn, what happens after Queen's death in Scotland The tradition of investing the heir apparent with the title of Prince of Wales began in 1301, when King Edward I of England completed the conquest of Wales. According to legend, Edward I promised the Welsh people a prince who could speak no English. He presented them with his infant son. And so began a tradition for English kings to bestow their heir with the title Prince of Wales. He gave the title to Prince Edward, who became King Edward II. 